Hello, so I'm on one of the core developers behind Parity, and today I'm going to tell, speak about uh, what we have been working on the past few months and what we have in store to come. So Parity, as you know, is a fully featured Ethereum client. It has everything you need to run a full node on an Ethereum network. It can sync the blockchain, it can do mining, it has the API compatible with other implementations. But it is also so much more. So yesterday we've seen what the user experience might look like with Parity, and it will look like that soon. And today I'm gonna focus on technical features that are would be interesting for dev developers or blockchain developers in general. Okay. Yeah. So Parity is written in Rust. Um, Rust is the relatively new programming language out there, which is particularly well suited for system programming and building fast and reliable software. It has memory safety and concurrency safety guarantees, and all that without sacrificing performance. And it works very well for blockchain applications where reliability and speed are equally important. And it worked very well for us, so our team is quite happy with this choice. And yeah, we saved us a lot of time. So for all of the developers out there, I would greatly recommend to take a look into it. And it's also one of the reasons that we believe Parity is the fastest Ethereum client out there. But more on that later. And from day one, we designed Parity to be modular and configurable. So you can use it as a library. We have fully documented internal APIs. Then there is a ton of command line options to tweak various as aspects of Parity's behavior. And soon we'll be providing configuration files so that you could easily manage all these options. And then presets so that you would have a particular set of uh, configurations optimized for a usage scenarios such as mining or uh, running on a Raspberry Pi or doing dev development. Now let's get to performance a bit. I'm gonna show you just one figure here, 2,900 transactions per second. Uh, that's how fast Parity can handle syncing the blockchain. That's the main Homestead blockchain, per 2.2 million blocks with nine and a half million transactions in them. And that includes full block and transaction validation. And that's how fast is the, that's the average transaction rate that Parity can do. And there is still room for improvement, and we're still working on optimizing this even further. Uh, we also take a great deal of effort into optimizing latencies, so block and transaction import times. When the new blocks arrive from the network, it gets imported and propagated in the least possible time. And all of that comes without using too much memory so that you can easily run Parity on a second generation Raspberry Pi and it won't break a sweat and you can even use it as a DAP server. Yeah. Now let's talk a bit more about security. Probably heard all of kinds of security issues with Ethereum recently. So one example is if you expose your RPC to the external network and you unlock your account even for a short duration, you will probably get your the funds stolen. And nowadays most of the clients work around that by deprecating unsafe APIs. And we took it one step further by introducing the secure transaction signer architecture. So the idea is that all of the APIs that work with private keys, such as sending a transaction, and they become privileged and they no longer execute immediately. Instead, when a DAP sends a transaction, it is added to the confirmation queue. And it stays in the queue until user confirms or rejects it. And that confirmation is done over an additional secure channel that is not exposed to the external network. And it is isolated from DAPs. It run, runs in the sandbox isolated environment. And it also requires additional authorization, which comes in the form of the authorization token, which user needs to enter 
first time before using it. And yeah, I can show you the UI for that. So that's a bit outdated version, but still. So there is a UI for confirming transactions. So this is a version which is the Chrome extension. So when it zaps in the transaction, an icon pops up, and there is a list of transactions to confirm, and you can do that, confirm a transaction. Now we have further plans to isolate this even further, to move it to a separate process, or even to a different machine, the one with the key store, so that it can be secured and would communicate with a node over a secure IPC channel. And again, there's a lot more features, parity. Let's start with state-free pruning. This is something that can greatly reduce the blockchain database size. So it works by discarding the old blockchain states. So that the state is preserved only for the last thousand blocks and the rest is discarded. This means you won't be able to, say, query balance that account had a thousand blocks ago, but not that many users or applications need that information anyway. So it is discarded by default and that saves a lot of disk space. Now the database size for the latest Homestead network is under five gigabytes that feature turned on. But if you need full, full data, you can still have that. There is an option to, to keep it. Transaction tracing, that's the API that we've introduced recently. It's an extension that allows you to query extended transaction information. For example, you can pick an account or a set of accounts and you can query transfers involving these accounts over the whole blockchain. And this will include transfers originating from smart contracts, something which is very hard to do using the standard RPC. And if you run this query over the whole blockchain, it will still work fast because we use a lot of optimizations to make them work fast. This includes multi-level boom filters and so on. And this is something can be useful for writing something like a blockchain explorer or for any dApp that needs extended transaction history. Okay, it's snapshotting. This is something simple. Basically, you can uh, save a state of your blockchain to a file. And that file contains all the state information, all the recent state information and a few thousand of the recent blocks. And it is heavily compressed so that the current snapshot for the latest homestead is under 150 megabytes. And then restoring from that snapshot takes only a couple of minutes. Yeah, you run restore command and then two or three minutes you're good to go. Now, as I mentioned, this doesn't contain all the blocks. So at first you end up with some of the blocks missing, the older blocks. But as soon as the node starts working and it syncs to a latest state, it will download all the missing blocks in the background. So you end up with the whole blockchain after a while. So this doesn't compromise the network security. Now we'll be taking this uh, even further soon by introducing the snapshot sync, or as we call it, the warp sync. The idea is that every node, well, every parity node for now on the network will take a periodic snapshot every, say, 10,000 blocks. And that snapshot is the same across all nodes. And the nodes that start syncing can download these snapshots from other peers and sync from them. So, yeah, basically you start from scratch and in two or three minutes on a fast network, you. You can start working with Ethereum, doing transactions and all that. Okay. Private chains. Private chains are extremely easy with parity. All you need is one file. It's a JSON file that lists all the private chain specification. We have a few examples. Basically, it contains all you need. So 
Perron protocol parameters such as the target block time, genesis block data, network parameters such as network ID or a list of boot nodes. You can even replace proof of work with proof of authority, which is basically a list of nodes that are allowed to produce blocks without doing any mining. And something which is not here, but which something that we will be adding soon, is the ability to include building contracts written in native languages such as C, C++, or Rust. Basically, you just um, declare a dynamic library and an entry point into that, and Priority will call it when it's time to call a smart contract. Well, there are a lot of more smaller features, but I'm going to focus now on what's about to come. So the private proof of authority chains that I've mentioned earlier, they're quite basic at the moment. We want to improve them by making them Byzantine fault tolerant so that you can have a full-blown industrial grade uh, permission blockchain solution built on top of that. Uh, Stratum protocol, something requested by our miners community, also coming soon. This is a protocol to push uh, block work notifications to miner over TCP. Wide client, so initial work has started on that and it is coming out eventually. And of course, Metropolis transition, as soon as the specification is ready, we'll start working on that and be sure to release it as soon as possible. So. Yeah, this is Parity. We encourage you to go check it out. Check out our wiki if there's the features that you might be missing in other clients. And if you have any questions, join our discussion on Gitter. We'll be happy to answer them all. Mm, yeah, that would be all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arkady.